This is a discussion of the linearity principle from section 3.1. Uh, I'm going to read it. It's written here, of course. Uh, but suppose we have a linear system. We're talking about a two-by-two two system of differential equations. If you have a solution called y1, then any constant multiple of that solution is also a solution. And if you have two solutions, you can add them together. Okay. What this is, uh, and still have a solution. Of course, you can always add them together, but you still have a solution. And, and the claim is, is since I can multiply any solution by a scalar and get a solution, and I can add two solutions together to get a solution, then the claim and the real power of this is that any linear combination of solutions by a linear combination I would mean some scalar times one solution plus a scalar times another solution Um, any linear combination of solutions is also a solution. So let's look at an example and uh, uh, specifically what I mean. So uh, in section 2.4 uh, on page 192, this should now be a very familiar looking system. It's a partially decoupled system, but still one that can be written in matrix form. Here it is in its matrix form. And we use non-matrix techniques to find um, this as a solution. This was done in section 2.4. This is easily seen. It's a separable differential equation. A constant times e to the minus 4t will solve this equation. And then the technique was, was to plug that value into, in for y. We then had a constant coefficient linear differential equation, and we found its solution as well. In chapter 3, we're going to have matrix uh, methods for finding this. It'll be based on eigenvalues and eigenvectors, but we'll get the same answer, and this is just a good way to start. So in our matrix form, here is our uh, system of differential equations, and here's our solution. k1 e to the 2t minus 1 half k2 e to the minus 4t, and uh, k2 e to the minus 4t for y. I'm going to make note of two specific uh, solutions. If I let k1 be a 1 and k2 be a 0, I have this. And if I let uh, k1 be a 0 and k2 be a 1, I have this. So we're going to be referring to this as a general solution, and here are two very specific solutions for very specific values of k1 and k2. On the next slide, I'm going to verify that these are solutions. So once again, here is our system. Here are the two solutions that I found. Uh, the check would be if I differentiate this, so if I differentiate y1, all that happens is I bring down the 2, 2 comes down, its derivative is 2 e to the 2t, the derivative of 0 is 0, so that's what happens when I differentiate it. On the right-hand side, what happens if I multiply the matrix by y1, so here's the matrix, here's y1, row times column, the 2 multiplies this term, the 3 multiplies the 0, giving us this. The 0 multiplies this term, and the minus 4 multiplies the 0, giving us a 0. And sure enough, uh, let's do it in red, uh, this result and this result are equal, so y1 is a solution. y2 has a little more calculation. Here's y2. Is it also a solution? Well, it's derivative. I bring down the minus 4. Uh, to have a 2 e to the minus 4t, and I bring down the minus 4 to have a minus 4 e to the minus 4t. 
That's the left-hand side when I differentiate y2. When I multiply this matrix by y2, here we go, I take a row times a column. I have 2 times a minus 1 half is a negative 1, as we'll see, uh, e to the minus 4t, and a 3. Um, the 3 multiplies this term. Uh, it's row times column. 3 multiplies this term, giving us a 3 e to the minus 4t. And this row multiplies this column. We get a 0 times this is 0, and a minus 4 times this term gives us a minus 4 e to the minus 4t. This is, these two add up together just to give us a 2 e to the minus 4t, and this stays the same at minus 4 e to the minus 4t. And once again, when we took the derivative and we multiplied by the matrix, we got the same result, and so therefore uh, both, we've demonstrated, but both y1 and y2 are solutions. I want to show the last result that says any linear combination, any linear combination of y1 and y2, since they are both solutions, is also a solution. So here I've taken some random uh, linear combination, 3 times y1 minus 2 times y2. Here's what that looks like. 3 times y1 gives me a 3e to the 2t and a 0. And minus 2 times y2 you have to remember what y2 looked like, but it had a minus 1 half in front. Multiplying by minus 2 gives me a positive 1 in front. And this had a coefficient of 1. It now has a coefficient of minus 2. So here's what the linear combination looks like. And once again, we check. If I take the derivative of y3, so differentiating this is easy for us, we get a 6e to the 2t and a minus 4e to the minus 4t. 6e to the 2t minus 4e to the minus 4t. And the derivative of this term, we bring down the minus 4. We have an 8e to the minus 4t. Is that the same as when the matrix A multiplies y3? Here's the matrix A. I take a row times a column. I get a 2 times this term, so I get a 6e to the 2t and a 2e to the minus 4t. This 3 multiplies this term, and I get a negative 6 e to the minus 4t. This row multiplies this column to give me a 0 times this, and a minus 4 times this, giving me an 8 e to the minus 4t. The 2 e to the minus 4t terms uh, can be combined to give me a negative 4 e to the minus 4t. I have a positive 6 e to the 2t, and the second um, in the second position, I have this. And sure, again, once again, here is what I get when I differentiate y3. Here is what I get when I um, multiply it by the matrix, and they're equal. And so I've demonstrated that this particular linear combination um, of two solutions is a solution. And in fact, linear, linearity principle says any linear combination will be a solution. Okay, that's it for line linearity principle. Thank you.